I'm Julie Bartke with this Senate update. Should the Pollution Control Agency be allowed to reassess the water quality standards concerning sulfates, particularly in waterways where wild rice is grown? That question surfaced on the Senate floor during Wednesday's debate of the Senate Environment, Economic Development and Agriculture Bill. This, this amendment would eliminate the language that um, is in this bill on the wild rice standards. In 2011, the MPCA hired the best scientists from the University of Minnesota and engaged in, a, in the most comprehensive study of wild rice and sulfate anywhere in the world. As the result of this research, they concluded in February of 2014 that sulfate is not directly toxic to wild rice. However, in the surface water, it can be converted by bacteria to sulfide in the rooting zone of wild rice. Sulfide is toxic to wild rice. The 10 milligram per liter sulfate standard is needed and reasonable to protect wild rice production from sulfate-driven sulfide toxicity. The, um, the MPCA is also um, obligated under federal law to enforce the existing wild rice sulfate standard and to list wild rice waters that are impaired by sulfate pollution. Stating that they will not apply the wild rice water quality standard or list wild rice impaired waters is inconsistent with federal Clean Water Act requirements. They've our, the EPA has already explained that state law may not interfere with enforcement of federally approved water quality based effluent limit, limitations and in permits, including the wild rice sulfate standard. If the state issues a permit that does not ensure compliance with the existing wild rice sulfate standard, the federal government has the power to take over the permit. This is a really bad legislation that's included in this bill. It belongs in a policy bill, number one. And um, I urge the members to support this amendment. Thank you. Senator Thomasoni. Madam President, members, um, I vigorously oppose this amendment. Um, me members, um, this is an attempt to make sure that before permits are issued in anywhere in the state, and that could be wastewater treatment plants, it could be ethanol plants, it could be it could be um, taconite plants, it could be any big major anything where they where there's water discharges. This is an attempt to make sure that what we are putting in permits is actually achievable. And the we've proven over and over again that the 10 standard, there's no technology for the 10 standard other than reverse osmosis, which is extremely expensive and, and very hard to manage. And members, all this bill is, all this amendment is trying to do is to make sure that the PCA does what the 2011 bill asked them to do, and that is to make sure that they've designated the wild rice and they've come up with, with, with new rules in order to uh, implement uh, a standard of this type and members um, I I am I, I, I have no idea why we would not want this to happen I have no idea why we would not want the PCA to go ahead and find out how to do this and what's the right way to do this um, the sulfate standard of 10 was implemented for the first time in rules it was promulgated in 1973 over some very questionable science the fact of the matter is that it was never included in any uh, permits over the next 30 years and in 2009 for the f for the first or the second time in all those all those years it was actually included in a permit it's actually become a, an issue in many many areas of the state and the fact that um, there is uh, uh, implications for every wastewater treatment plant around the state uh, it could cost the taxpayers billions and billions of dollars if we don't do this right the high concentrations of up to 1600 were found that did not harm the wild rice up 
in, other, in another study by the chamber, up to 2,500 did not harm the wild rice. And, and so, members, um, it's, it's, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that these rules get promulgated in a manner that people can actually live with and that is actually consistent with the science so that when the PCA does issue permits that it won't be killing industry. We have a very, very fragile mining industry right now on the Iron Range as a result of what's going on worldwide. And to imp imp imply that they may have to make investments of 220 or 250 million dollars in order to meet a standard that we know um, is not is not harmful to the wild rice doesn't make any sense. And so members, let's let the PCA get its job done and go through with the standards and, and figure out exactly um, what the right way to do this is. Let the peer review go forward. Let everybody get together with all the right information and let's vote this amendment down. Senator Eaton. Thank you. Um, I did, would like to ask for a roll call. I neglected to roll do that. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Senator Eaton. I would just like to comment that um, I know the govern governor had stated that U.S. Steel has made it very clear that they're not going to agree to permit that as a standard of 10. But the Clean Water Act does not allow polluters to choose which regulation they will or will not comply with and does not support states when they cave into industry pressures. And they have advised the Minnesota legislature that should they determine that a state is not administering its federally approved program in accordance with the requirements of the Clean Water Act, they have the authority to require the state to take corrective action and, if necessary, to withdraw authorization of the program. They may have withdraw the state's authority to regulate water quality when the state program no longer complies with the federal clean water law. And the, the plan that is being proposed is um, being challenged by a scientist, Mr. Pastor, from the um, University of Duluth. And uh, I'm looking. Anyway, he says that this, the, uh, the uh, calculation that they want to use, the, the formula, to determine the uh, sulfide uh, standard is, is de cannot be defended in any um, kind of uh, uh, repeat studies or um, scientific process. Basically, the, it, the water changes, water moves. You could take the same, um, you could test the same area one day and a week later test it again, and you would come up with a totally different configuration. So it's, it's an undefensible, scientifically undefensible stance. So I'm asking the membership to stand up for the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and keep Minnesota in charge of our um, water quality by supporting this amendment. Senator Gazelka. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Members, uh, my first job out of high school was uh, as a steel worker. I worked uh, at Mintac. At, on the, the course crusher and saw how U.S. Steel uh, worked and was grateful for that job. Lived on the range for a while, still have family up there, still have a cabin up there. And uh, my father-in-law does wild ricing and uh, lots of wild rice in places that uh, the sulfite levels are higher than, than what we thought was damaging. And for us to then knee-jerk do this and uh, shut down an industry, potentially shut down a future industry of copper nickel, following these regulations I think is a big mistake. What people don't realize is they have these huge piles of tailings and, and sulfate in the water and even as we move forward with this with the, the de development of copper nickel they're actually going to clean up the water from where it is right now and so I think we should let science rule on here we certainly need to take our time on this and this amendment uh, I do not support. Thank you. Senator Marty. Madam President, I, this is a bill that Senator Tomasoni brought to the Environment Committee. We had a full two-hour hearing. He withdrew the bill before a vote. Um, I understand there are strong feelings on this. I wanted to raise a couple other points about this issue, though. First of all, the, 
concern about the sulfide in the water is not just about wild rice. We have, I think about two years ago, Minnesota Health Department studies showed that more than one out of 10 children born in the Lake Superior watershed had elevated, dangerously elevated levels of mercury in their blood. Newborns with dangerously elevated mercury in their bloods, which, which is related to the sulfide. This is a public health issue. It's a serious environmental issue which we have to find a way to clean up. Whether the mines are operating or not, these are toxic waste problems that we're gonna to have to address as a state. I think we ought to be taking a good look at that. The issue here is telling the state not to enforce it until we have the new rules all promulgated and everything else. We don't really have the choice. This is required under the Federal Clean Water Act. And I would urge us to not adopt this, to adopt the amendment to remove this section. It shouldn't be in a policy, it should be in a policy bill. We should have policy debate on it. And it should not be handled in the part of the budget again. I think it's the wrong place for it. I understand that people feel strongly about it. But this is a serious environmental issue that is not going to go away because we say you can't enforce the standards, partly because federal law does require the PCA to enforce the standard. So I'm not sure how this all plays out. I don't believe that we can just thumb our nose at the federal government in the Clean Water Act. I don't believe we want to do that. I don't think it's good for the health of people. I don't think it's good for the environment. I think it's a mistake to do that. And frankly, the reason, and I think we're all concerned about the iron mining on the iron range. I think everybody in the state ought to be concerned about that. But the reason they're shutting down plants right now is nothing to do with the sulfide standard. It doesn't actually have anything to do with the electric costs. The problem is that iron ore prices, there's a glut on the market and the price has fallen by more than half. And there are people dumping more steel on the market. And that's something that's an issue that we have to try and address, but this bill won't do it. This simply says let's not enforce our environmental standards. And it's not just wild rice. That's part of a measure of how the health of our lakes is. But it also does affect public health. And you wouldn't have one in 10 newborns in that area being born with dangerously elevated levels of mercury in their blood if we didn't have this problem. So I urge you to support the Eaton Amendment and re remove this from the bill. Senator Thomasoni. Ma Madam President, the standard is about wild rice. It's a wild rice standard. It's a sulfate standard. It's not a mercury standard. In fact, 90% of what comes in Minnesota and turns into uh, the mercury that comes to Minnesota comes from outside of Minnesota. It comes from uh, it's a it, it comes from outside of our area and is virtually impossible for us to control. Um, y y you know, uh, the mining industry has been in northern Minnesota for 130 years. And I would put our water and our air up against anybody's down here in the Twin Cities any day of the week. I know that we have very, very clean water. I know that we have very clean air. And the, the mining industry has been investing millions and millions of dollars in environmental uh, cleanup uh, controls in their stacks and in their furnaces. And um, they are part of the cooperation that is, that is happening here to make sure that the environment stays clean and that we live in a, in a clean, clean environment. This standard has not been applied for 130 years. And to say we can't wait another couple of years until the agency and all the in, in, uh, parties involved figure out how to get this exactly right, because they've, they've definitely established that, this, that the standard that's in rule now is not, is not workable. If we can't wait a couple more years, then there's something wrong here. Uh, members, vote no. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Thank you, Madam President. I rise against the Eaton Amendment. Members, we've been dealing with this for, uh, seems like eons, and Senator Gazelka was quite eloquent in his uh, very, very easy or simple description as to what's been going on in, in years be before that I was going to refer to that I've been involved here and the funding that we've spent on this. And time and again, we, we, uh, we listen to, uh, to concerned citizens about this. So we spent millions of dollars doing this. And, and uh, you know, Senator, Senator Marty, you bring up some interesting stuff when you talk about mercury. I mean, we were all going to die from eating fish. If that were the case, if we ever die, were going to die from an overdiet of fish, I, th I think I would have probably not been here 
very long because I eat a lot of fish. Uh, uh, I talk about acid rain. M members, we can go on and on and on about all the scares. We have to live in this world. We have to do the right thing. We have done the right thing many times when it comes, comes to this, this uh, uh, wild rice uh, expenditures that have been going on at the state of Minnesota. So members, uh, this, is, this is good to have in the bill and uh, I again stand in, in opposition to the, to the Eaton Amendment. Senator Eaton, final comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would just like to add that the tribal natural resource agencies say that the current rule is based on an obvious impact and that the sulfate pollution may be one reason that many of the wild rice waters have seen rice crops greatly diminished in recent years. Long stretches of the St. Louis River, for example, are now devoid of the famous food source that's considered a sacred gift by many of the Ojibwe people. The Native Americans believe that the state seems to be ignoring tribal concerns and that wild rice and they believe that wild rice deserves stronger protections. So I would just like to say that I think we should follow the law, and I think that we should protect uh, this very limited resource in this country, the wild rice. I don't know where else it's grown, but um, I would hope that members would vote with me on this amendment. Secretary will close the roll. There being 24 ayes and 38 noes, the motion does not prevail. The amendment is not adopted.